when I have fears when I have fears that I may cease to be before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain before high piled books in character hold like rich garners the full ripened grain when I behold upon the night's starred face huge cloudy symbols of a high romance and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance and when I feel fair creature of an hour that I shall never look upon thee more never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love then on the shore of the wide world I stand alone and think till love and fame to nothingness do sink Ode to a Nightingale My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains, one minute passed, and lethe words had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou light-winged dryad of the trees in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless singest of summer in full-throated ease oh for a draught of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth tasting of flora and the country green dance and Provencal song and sunburnt mirth oh for a beaker full of the warm south full of the true the blushful hippocrine with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth that I might drink and leave the world unseen and with thee fade away into the forest dim fade far away dissolve and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known the weariness the fever and the fret here where men sit and hear each other groan where palsy shakes a few sad last gray hairs where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow away away for i will fly to thee not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brain perplexes and retards. Already with thee, tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways i cannot see what flowers are at my feet nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs but in embalmed darkness guess each sweet 
wherewith the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, white hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid May's eldest child, the coming musk rose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. Darkling, I listen, and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death, called him soft names in many a mused rhyme, to take into the air my quiet breath. Now more than ever seems it rich to die, to cease upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Still wouldst thou sing, and I have ears in vain, to thy high requiem become a sod. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird. No hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown. Perhaps the selfsame song that found a path through the sad heart of Ruth when, sick for home, she stood in tears amid the alien corn. The same that oft times hath charmed magic casements, opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. Forlorn, the very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my soul self. Adieu, the fancy cannot cheat so well as she is famed to do deceiving elf. Adieu, adieu, thy plaintive anthem fades past the near meadows, over the still stream, up the hillside, and now tis buried deep in the next valley glades. Was it a vision or a waking dream? Fled is that music. Do I wake? or sleep. Ode on a Grecian Urn Thou still unravished bride of quietness, Thou foster child of silence and slow time, Sylvan historian who canst thus express A flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape Of deities or mortals or of both, In Tempe or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loathe? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore, ye soft pipes, play on, not to the sensual ear, but more endeared pipe to the spirit ditties of no tone. Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Bold lover, never, never canst thou kiss, though winning near the goal. Yet do not grieve, she cannot fade, Though thou hast not thy bliss, Forever wilt thou love, And she be fair. Ah, happy, happy boughs, Thou cannot shed your leaves, 
nor ever bid the spring adieu. And, happy melodist unwearied, forever piping songs forever new, more happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever panting and forever young, all breathing human passion far above, that leaves a heart high sorrowful and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O mysterious priest, leadest thou that heifer lowing at the skies, and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? What little town by river or seashore, or mountain built with peaceful citadel, is emptied of this folk, this pious morn? And, little town, thy streets forevermore will silent be, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can e'er return. O attic shape, fair attitude, with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and the trodden weed, thou silent form, dost tease us out of thought, as doth eternity. Cold pastoral, when old age shall this generation waste, thou shalt remain in midst of other woe than ours, a friend to man, to whom thou sayest, beauty is truth, truth, beauty, that is all ye know on earth, and all ye need to know. To Autumn Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, Close bosom friend of the maturing sun, Conspiring with him how to load and bless With fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, To bend with apples the mossed cottage trees, And fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel, to set budding more and still more, later flowers for the bees, until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells. Who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store? Sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a greenery floor, thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind, or on a half-reaped furrow sound asleep, drowsed with the fumes of poppies, while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers. And sometimes like a gleaner Thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook, or by a cider press with patient look, thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours. Where are the songs of spring? Ay, where are they? Think not of them, thou hast thy music too. While barred clouds bloom the soft dying day, And touch the stubble plains with rosy hue, Then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn Among the river sallows, borne aloft, Or sinking 
as the light wind lives or dies. And full-grown lambs loud bleat from the hilly born. Hedge crickets sing, and now with treble soft, the redbreast whistles from a garden croft, and gathering swallows twitter in the skies. This living hand, this living hand now warm and capable of earnest grasping, would, if it were cold and in the icy silence of the tomb, so haunt thy days and chill thy dreaming nights that thou wouldst wish thine own heart dry of blood so in my veins red life might stream again and thou be conscience calmed see here it is i hold it towards you